So you become a nurse, your first job's at a nursing home. That's where I started out. As a nurse, that's where I started out. Because uh, I couldn't find a job anywhere else. And it's coming time for that very first big old med pass. I was daytime, so that dreaded, what is it, seven to nine med pass, whatever it is, you have an hour before and an hour after, and it seems like every single patient on the unit needs meds at eight. So I think it was like seven to nine. You're not gonna do anything but run. You got your med cart, we had med carts. Uh, we did have a med room and certain things you would only get out of that med room at specific times, like controlled narcotics, um, certain things that need refrigerated, uh, you would only get them out like right as you were using them. But for the rest of that time, you are running. You got that med cart, that cow uh, computer on wheels, and you are pushing it. You, know, you have anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50 patients. You got to get them all medicated, depending on if you have a med tech or not. Um, and depending on, actually, to be honest with you, depending on our census, if I had a med uh, med tech or not. When I had a med tech, I was cool with that because all I had to really handle then was uh, trachs, vents, feeding tubes, um, assessments, stuff like that. Anyway, back to the med pass which is what I should be talking about anyways. That med pass is a beast. The very first time you do that nursing home med pass, it's gonna feel like you're never gonna quit. It's gonna feel like this is never gonna end and you're gonna die and there's nothing you know left for you to do. You know, because you got so many patients that have so many medications that you, know, you just don't know how to handle it. So, the best thing to do, and this is my experience, is take a look at the MAR. Uh, if it's in the computer, take a look at it, break it down by um, who gets what. Um, spend you a little bit of time after your shift one day or before your shift. Um, one day and just study that mar and no not necessarily to know you know why they're getting this medication but to know which medication is given at what time once you study the mar and get your system up you will be able to uh, set a plan you say all right, well, I've got this patient, this patient, this patient, this patient, I'll have seven o'clocks. That patient, that patient, that patient has eight o'clocks, and that one has nine o'clocks. And then every now and then you get a patient that has a seven and a nine, and you can't necessarily give them at the same time, um, you know, for whatever reason. Other patients have medications that need you to take their blood pressures, or blood sugars, or pulse rates, or, um, you know very quick assessments so basically with them study them set them up in your plan so you know okay at 701 I'm gonna see patient 1 703 I'm gonna be in patient 2 707 I'm gonna be in patient you know 3 and very you know and go on down the line so I would carry we had a um, Every day we got report. And the report had every person's name on it and their room number. So what I would do, since I studied the MAR, I would write down what time those patients' first meds were due. And then I would write down who were my assessments and then I would write down my trachs and vents, which there were two trachs, one vent. I think that's right something like that um, and write down what time those are due and so I would write them all down I had a master copy that I kept with me 
and if anything changed, I would make a copy of the master copy and just sort of write a, write a quick note of what has changed. And if it stayed permanent, that became my new master copy. So I had my master copy with every single name and you know, I wrote down who gets what at what time and when I need to assess, when I need to treat uh, wounds, you know, things like that. And when I started doing that, it, it actually took me a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, my first month, I, I came home exhausted every day because I didn't study the more. I just, you know, went by the seat of my pants and, you know, went down the line, room, you know, room one, room two, room three, room four, room four. And then when I made that master copy, I figured out, all right, well, I'll get room one and then I'll get room four and then I'll come back to two. The cart never changed. I put the cart in a central location and then I would run back and forth from the cart to the rooms and because of the times of the medications and the times of the treatments and things weren't exactly in line with room one, room two, room three, room four, it became a lot easier when I made myself a plan. So I studied all my meds, studied my treatments and made a huge list of it and it just became so much easier so for the first month you know I never got to sit down I never I never did anything but pass meds do assessments treat wounds I never did a thing other than that after my first month and you know somebody finally came to me it's like here look this is what you need to do and I kind of tweaked their little setup I didn't really uh, do exactly what they had said but I found something that worked for me when I found that, I was actually able to like sit down and chart, <laughs> you know, rather than charting from a sprint, you know, because you're charting a lot. And if you're charting so much and you don't, uh, you know, you're just charting on the run, basically, you know, because you have to, because if you sit down, you're going to lose 10 minutes, you know. But by making a plan and um, making a plan, studying the MAR, studying the, tr the TAR, the treatment book, you know, I was able to finally sit down and chart. And while I charted, I'd probably eat a biscuit or something. So I was able to eat like something. So when you started a nursing home, you know, study that more study those books study everything you can study you know if if possible before you go on the floor and if it's not possible do it very early on that way you can figure out what you need to do to get those meds passed and use a little bit of time to chart or eat something because if you don't you will not and you'll be leaving two to three hours after shift trust me I know. Hope it helps. Thank you much.